I've never done a truly small form factor build before, and I wanted the adventure. But of course, being who I am, I wanted to be different, and since I had not seen anyone do a GU7 build before, I decided to go with that one. So let's start with parts. I'm using an ASRock B550 MITX motherboard, which is cheap, reliable, and that's all I ever need from a motherboard. The CPU is the newly released 5700X3D that I bought on launch day, paired with the RX 7600 and powered by this Montec Century Mini. For storage, I'm just using this one terabyte Western Digital Black SN770, and memory will be handled by this 16 gigabyte Corsair Vengeance LPX kit. The case fans are ID cooling NO12015 XTs, which will be protected by these Noctua fan grills, and I'll be using this matching ID cooling IS55 CPU heatsink. Then I have this GPU riser cable from Easy DIY, which certainly won't pose any issues with the build at all, and I'll be drinking this Kraken 94 proof spiced rum while wondering what the fuck I'm doing with my life, knowing that one day the sun will swallow the earth and all of this will have been for nothing. But for now, I've got all my parts and it's time to get building. As with all builds, we'll start by prepping the motherboard and getting the reading material ready. Once we have the RAM seated, it's time to do a mock-up for the heatsink to check for clearance. I find that the LPX kit is about one millimeter too tall for this heatsink, and I run off to Amazon to buy an ultra-low profile Team Group Vulcan Z kit. Slow panning shot of the thing, there we go, and with the RAM installed again, we can insert the M.2 SSD. Now that we know we have clearance, we can seat the 5700X3D, apply the thermal grease, and mount the heatsink. Then we open up the chassis and install the case fans. I'll start by affixing the fan grills to the fans, which was a mistake since I can't fit them in there with the power extension cable in the way. So we'll remove the case fan mounting plate and attach the fans to it, and of course I'll mount them on the wrong side first. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. But we get them on the correct side of the plate, and after orienting everything properly, I put the fan grills back on and move on to installing the motherboard. And then I find out that Cuxrars, or however the fuck you say this name, uh, has their measurements wrong, and the 55mm cooler doesn't fit when I should have a 57mm limit. I am, again, running off to Amazon to buy another cooler. While I'm waiting on the other heatsink, I decided to go ahead and feed the GPU riser cable into the case. I find out that the fan grills prevent me from doing that, so I have to remove them again, feed the GPU riser cable through, and then replace the fan grills. We're back to the motherboard for the replacement of the heatsink, which means I need to remove the old mounting bracket and replace it with the new one. The instructions are absolutely useless, and I'm left to figure it out by myself. The mounts are a nightmare to work with, but we eventually get the new heatsink mounted about the time I'm realizing that I bought the Vulcan Z RAM kit for absolutely no reason. So I'm going to go ahead and install the GPU riser while I wait for the new heatsink fan. I'm going to tidy up some cables for management later, and then screw down the GPU riser it doesn't fit. This cable from Easy DIY isn't a true double reverse cable, it's a straight cable which is bent 180 degrees by a plastic housing, so I can't screw it down. So I send that one back and I get this 190mm one from LinkUp, which is an actual double reverse cable. This one is thinner, but I still have to take off the fan grills, again, to fit the connectors through. The cat gets in the way and then it's time to attach the GPU riser cable to the... <laughs> it's too short. The case calls for a 185mm riser cable, and this one is just ever so slightly too short. Easy fix, and I'm not upset at all. I'm so fucking done with this fucking shit, dude. Kind of. I send it back and try a third time. The next day, my new CPU heatsink fan arrives. You're not gonna believe this. So I got this TL9015B that I'm returning because it's an extra and I don't need it. So I wanted this one, an ID cooling 9215. Get this. That's hilarious. Of course, I send that one back, and a few days later, I get the correct one. Now, all my fans match. Woohoo! I grabbed a cheaper G-Skill Ripjaws RAM kit, since I don't have to worry about clearance anymore, and now it's time to try the GPU riser cable again, which means taking off the fan grills for the 12 millionth fucking time and threading the cable through. Once the riser cable was finally installed, I replaced the fan grills and installed the RX 7600. I'm very happy that this GPU was under 210 millimeters because I needed the space for power cables later. Speaking of, it's time for the power supply mounting bracket to be removed and then plugging in the front panel headers, which are forgivingly simple. Because there's no USB pass-through on this motherboard, I'm just going to bunch up that cable and leave it up there. By happy coincidence, the SFX power supply I got was only 100 millimeters long, and it's simply perfect. Cook's Roars says that an SFXL power supply can fit, but there is simply no shot. Much in the same way that they say 120 by 25 millimeter case fans can be used that the CPU heatsink can be 57 millimeters tall, they're just wrong. So I have to remove the fan grills in order to route the power cables. <sighs> again, I get out the SATA power cable to power the fan hub I got from Easy DIY, and I get delayed again by the cat who insists on being annoying. I eventually come back to finish routing the power cables though. They put the power supply mounting bracket screws in a place where you have to plug in the power supply after mounting it, which is super irritating. And you thought I was done removing and installing the fan grills? Think again! 
I have to remove the fan grills to move the extension cable again. Now I can finally start plugging in components into the power supply. It takes some effort, but I finally get it all secured. And then the last thing to go in is the easy DIY fan hub. The cat is being ultra annoying while I put the finishing touches on the cable management and make sure none of the power cables are going to interfere with the fans. This is the fucking locking arm for the PCIe cable. And it just, it just broke under the weight, under the weight of this fucking tiny ass cable. It just broke that shit off. Oh, oh my, we're just going to let it ride. It'll be fine. Fuck it. For the very last time, the fans get grills and it's time to plug her in and see if she works. The moment of truth. Let's see how this works out. It's alive. I was in mini panic mode until I realized the monitor's power was plugged into the USB-C on the front panel. And remember, there is no USB-C pass-through. Since the monitor didn't have power, the PC failed to post, but when in doubt, turn it off and turn it back on again. All the fans were running properly without hitting any of the cables, thank you Noctua fan girls, and the PC booted up as it was supposed to. After installing drivers, it was time to test some thermals. With the chassis open, the CPU ran at about 40 degrees Celsius, which is a perfectly normal idle temp. With the case closed, however, Hold on, let me mention that the side panel screws don't line up. The build quality of this chassis is absolutely dog shit, and I do not for the life of me understand how you get your own measurements wrong. Like the CPU cooler height, misalignment of the screws on the side panels, misrepresenting the specs for component sizes like 120 by 25 millimeter fans that would 100% be resting against the power extension cable. This is without mentioning that an XFXL power supply would require custom cables, and even then, I doubt it would fit. In the end, this build took 18 days. The idle temps are around 60 degrees Celsius with the case closed, and the load temps are a flat 90 degrees Celsius with thermal throttling down to 3 gigahertz clock speeds. Fuck! Oop, never mind. I'm an idiot. I found out that the fans were set to silent mode when I booted into BIOS to enable the XMP profile. So with the fans on performance mode, I got the full boost clock speed at about 80 degrees Celsius. Honestly, despite everything, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I wanted a small form factor build with a glass side panel under 10 liters and the GU7 made it happen. Rock on.